Bog FPV. This is another one of my abbreviated builds. Uh, the goal of this build is to come up with a lightweight four inch freestyle build uh, that will be well below the 250 gram mark with the battery, 4S battery. And uh, so the components I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the Armitan Gecko frame here. So it should be very sturdy. I'm going to be using the iFlight Zing. Um, these are the 1408 3600 kV uh, motors. Uh, the stack I'm using is the iFlight uh, Sussex uh, D Mini F7 Twig 40 amp, and it's a 4 in 1 ESC 20 by 20 stack, and it's uh, really designed for the uh, DGI air unit. And then um, I have uh, a buzzer here. Um, these are some NXT 30 connector. I'm probably going to go with that. And um, as far as the camera and the star of the show, it's going to be the Vista Cadex FPV um, system here, which is essentially a shrunk down uh, DJI air unit. So um, that's what I'm going to start with. All right, I have the motors installed with the heat shrink tubing on them. So next what I did, I soldered on the wire harness to the Vista unit here, and I just flipped the whole unit upside down so I could get access to the pads and then just bolted it in place. So I had a stable platform to solder onto. The instructions are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they have a wiring diagram, but basic, basically red is a power. Uh, black is a power ground. Yellow is UART RX. White is UART TX. Black wire is signal ground. And then yellow is S bus. So this is what the Vista unit looks like when it's installed. I used M2 20 millimeter uh, bolts for the uh, attaching the Vista uh, to the uh, gecko here. Um, I thought that the best thing to do is to directly screw it down or bolt it down to the frame. That way it conducts some heat into the frame to help cool it better. So I didn't want to use any TPU or anything like that. Um, as a size comparison, uh, this is the, uh, I made I printed out this lens cover. So you can see how small this thing is. Um, so it's uh, actually going to be pretty slick in this build. So this is a top view. Low ESR cap soldered on as well as the pigtail. Completed soldering up the ESCs to the motor wires. The last of the soldering, it was a pretty easy build. Um, the red wire is plus five and that is the um, red wire there on the second pad on the outside. And then the buzz negative is the first pad on the inside row. To show you what the wiring looks like before I put the top plate on. I did plug a battery in with a smoke stopper and everything looked good. I'm going to go ahead and put the top plate on and start configuring things. With the top plate on, I went ahead and uh, double-sided sticky taped the buzzer here. I went ahead and added a tie wrap as a strain relief for the pigtail. I uh, used they had a little uh, mast here that I tie wrapped the antenna onto so uh, it looks uh, pretty slick it worked out um, great uh, there's still a lot of space in here for cooling so I'm very pleased with this build so far well it finally warmed up where I live to melt some of the snow but it's a muddy mess so I took the Vista gecko build on a slow maiden flight I shortened uh, the video up at the end because it is very boring. I just was uh, wanting to show I was getting about five minutes of flight time with the 520 milliamp hour batteries that I was running. Um, so um, here are my first impressions of the sub 250 gram uh, Gecko 4 inch build with the Cadex Vista. Uh, the pros at 19 grams versus 45.8 grams. But that's a significant weight savings when you're trying to get the four inch build under 250 grams. I was really surprised uh, also how much flight time as stated I was getting. 
I, uh, with uh, the 1408 3600 kV motors and props and just tooling around with easy flying, I was uh, easily getting five minutes of flight time. And that was not charging the batteries to high voltage. Uh, the build itself with the iFlight stack uh, was super easy. I think that's something that even a, a new pilot that's trying to do their first build could easily do. Uh, also, it flies very smooth, even with the stock beta flight PIDs. Uh, I did have RPM filtering turned on. And then lastly, I really like the Zing motors. Uh, the, it was a good match with uh, this frame and uh, setup that I currently, currently have. So let's go over the cons. Uh, not having a built-in DVR is not optimal, and hopefully there will be a second version that will include one. Uh, even though uh, CADEX claims the range is only impacted by multipath environments over the DJI Air unit, uh, the diversity antennas do seem to make a difference, at least where I was flying with tree interference. I mean, it wasn't significant. I was flying at 200 milliwatts, but I, I did notice... Uh, uh, compared to the DJI Air unit on another quad I have, um, it was uh, a little worse. But, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, something that was significantly worse. So overall, my goal was to get uh, the build under 250 grams without major heroics. I did achieve that goal barely at 248. I'm sure I could shave off another 10 to 11 grams by removing the buzzer, you know, one motor bolt per arm and going to a lighter antenna. So my overall impression of this build, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. And so I'll show you a short uh, video again. And as always, thanks for watching my channel.